Okay, assalamu alaikum. Um, thank you for joining us on Muslim Network TV, America's only Muslim focused network. You can always watch us 24 by 7 on Samsung Galaxy 19, Amazon Fire, Roku TV. What? Huh? Okay. Chachu is not here anymore. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you for joining us on Muslim Network TV, America's only Muslim focused network. You can always watch us 24 by 7 on Samsung Galaxy 19, Roku TV, Amazon Fire, and soon on Apple TV. My name is Kayet Sefi. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur for the last 25 years. Currently, my title is president of a small boutique company uh, called Wit Inc. And one of these days, hopefully, I will get a chance to tell you more about me. Uh, so today, uh, this show uh, is, we are calling it Entrepreneurs Are Us. Basically meaning we are all entrepreneurs in some ways and we can formally become one. And the idea is about this program is to inspire uh, particularly our youth to become entrepreneurs by exposing them and by talking to different entrepreneurs in different fields. And hopefully I will bring uh, a guest every week um, to you so you can, we can all learn from them. Uh, today, my guest is Shadan Malik. He is the president and CEO of a company called i Boards. Uh, interesting thing is that he is not only a great entrepreneur, uh, but he's also a good friend of mine. And we have done actually businesses together. So please uh, help me welcome Shadan Malik. Assalamu alaikum. Wa, wa alaikum assalam, Shadan. How are you, my friend? Beautiful, wonderful. So yeah, alhamdulillah, what a nice day. I decided to do this thing from outside. So hope you will find not many noise and stuff, except some birds chirping, which is not a bad thing. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I was just uh, giving a brief intro about the program and you and I talked about it. Uh, the idea is to find out from different entrepreneurs, their stories, their journey, how did they reach there? Uh, you know, who inspired them? Uh, any regrets, their background, all that good stuff. So let's just start. So I think in this case, I know a lot about you already, but for our audience, let's just start with your background. So can you give us a little bit about your background, where you come from? How did you, uh, uh, you being an immigrant, uh, tell us a little bit about your background uh, from India and your journey here. I have a humble background. Um, I uh, was raised in India. I did uh, my bachelor's there. And like uh, many from our generation in the early 90s, uh, we aspired to come and have advanced education here. So that brought me to the US in uh, 1991 to do my master's, uh, which I completed in uh, Virginia Tech in the field of uh, industrial and systems engineering. And um, I have been in the US since. So I came here in 1991 and uh, now it's 2022. It seems like a long time, but it seems uh, not too long for me. Time goes by. And um, after that, um, I um, fin after finishing my master's, I uh, worked uh, uh, for uh, some analytics company. I had three different uh, jobs, three different organizations. And um, that um, led me to uh, earn my rights to live in the United States. And after that, uh, uh, my bug for entrepreneurship uh, led me to uh, you know, start uh, different businesses. And uh, like stories of many, I had uh, quite a few failed uh, initial attempts until uh, the internet came along. And uh, then uh, uh, I was fortunate to have a friend who, uh, who trusted in me, who was my brother. And we started, uh, no, we started a, a technology consulting and website building company. And that um, was a great start. And that uh, led us uh, into learning a lot about um, 
about running a business, about uh, um, you know, um, selling value to clients for uh, technology projects. And in the process, uh, we stumbled across an idea to uh, um, build a software um, around dashboards. And dashboards, uh, in this case, doesn't mean the, the car or the truck dashboards. It actually means uh, this inspiration from the same place, but it means uh, an ability to present data in a graphical visual format and present the most important data for a quick glance, much like you expect a driver in the car to have a quick glance of uh, what's going on. So that's what led to um, the starting of iDashboards software, an iDashboards company. And uh, here we are about 15 years later, um, still, uh, no, still going along on that journey. Wow, Mashallah, you described the, the, the 15, 20 or 25 year journey actually in, in five minutes. Actually, that's one of the one of the, the qualities of an entrepreneur to describe uh, what they call the elevator pitch, if you will, about, you know, so I think uh, that was pretty good. But I, I want to go a little bit of more detail, you know, because I think the whole idea is to put that human face, uh, uh, which is behind the entrepreneur, you know, a lot of time our... Uh, in a lot of people's mind, it is about like, you know, somebody who's extremely brilliant or has a great idea, which you have never come up with and you're drop out from a college, you know, because our stories are all about like Bill Gates and Zuckerberg and stuff like that. But 99.99% uh, of the entrepreneurs have, you know, background like anybody else. So with that in mind, I, I, I thought I'll go a little bit deeper about your background, about parents, about your siblings. Just give us a little bit of that. And then we'll talk more about, um, you know, about the details of the business also. Sure. One, one thing I can tell you about uh, dropping out from college. Unfortunately, I was not one of those. Otherwise, I would have been a better entrepreneur. So it looks like... Uh, that was one qualification I missed. I did end up finishing both of my college degrees. Um, you asked me about uh, a little bit of the family background. Um, no, that'll take me back again, 30 plus years back, uh, back to India. I grew up uh, in a small, modest family from, from a city called Patna in India. And, um, um, and uh, we're just a small family. I just uh, one sibling in, uh, I went to a uh, uh, local school, but uh, I wanted to uh, join the army, just like many young kids. Actually, I wanted to be in the Air Force. So that led me to uh, join uh, an army school back in India, which, uh, uh, which was, I think, a good, good training. Uh, to be tough, to be independent, uh, those are things you certainly need in any entrepreneurship. And to be resilient, and Army teaches all that. So I got the training pretty early in my life, uh, right from grade six to 12, I was in the Army school, after which um, I decided to pursue civilian life because somewhere along the way, I realized that uh, I was not meant for Army. I was not uh, uh, meant to fire guns and bombs at people. So, yeah, I, th that led me to uh, pursue engineering uh, in the in the civil life, if you will. And uh, I, I was fortunate to get into uh, one of the better institutions in India uh, called uh, IIT. So I was in IIT for four years, did my electrical engineering. And uh, my family is still back in India. I think uh, they, they, they liked uh, to be with their... Uh, you know, with a greater community, if you will. Um, and uh, so fortunate, my, still, my parents are still uh, alive, although they're a very late age. So you can expect what happens in advanced age. So that's a little bit about my family background. Great, thank you. Um, so, um, you know, uh, obviously, as you, as you just mentioned, you went to IIT. For people who do not know about IIT, they are the top institute actually in the world. Uh, and then on top of it, electrical engineering. So obviously, you come from a very, <laughs> you're, you're a bright young man. Uh, 
Um, so, so, you know, obviously, normally, you know, people, when they go to engineering college, you know, and then after that, they find a job and they live a, you know, happy life afterwards. What, what kind of um, turned you on into entrepreneurship? Well, I don't think there was anything specific um, after the college that got me into entrepreneurship. Um, I had uh, the desire to be an entrepreneur uh, before uh, before even I started college, actually, um, even when I was in high school. And the reason, reason being that uh, growing up, I saw the people around me who were doing well, uh, well off uh, in life. They had all the amenities. Uh, were usually successful entrepreneurs. Um, even even a successful shopkeeper I saw um, had all the means and amenities to have a comfortable life uh, compared to most other people in India. Not to talk about uh, bigger entrepreneurs. So that was my inspiration. It's like you know what? Why why couldn't uh, I be like that because again, I, I came from a very modest uh, and humble background where a lot of little things that um, was uh, a, a privilege uh, for me. I, I couldn't think about it and I couldn't even ask my parents for it because I knew that uh, I, you know, I was aware of our modest means, you know, especially in those years, India was still uh, very much a developing country. So um, the reason I'm saying all that is because uh, to make the point that uh, I think it was the, uh, you know, um, the economic or the financial motivation that got me into entrepreneurship very early in life. However, I also realized that uh, I wanted to have a good education. So, kind of, uh, you know, that that early idea was put on the shelf, if you will, so that uh, I could uh, I could study and get a reputable uh, education, and then you know, let life lead its, lead its way. And uh, that's how it, it happened. So it wasn't anything after uh, my, um, you know, my college. One thing that did help was to find a, a friend, a trustworthy friend, because uh, um, it's, uh, it's much harder to start a business um, when you have uh, almost no support, you're all alone. And obviously my family was not here, so um, you know, um, when two uh, two people join hands, you know, the sum of uh, uh, parts, individual parts, is a lot. Uh, the, the whole is a lot greater than the sum of individual parts, and uh, I think that's what uh, helped me um, to kind of get get going with some of the ideas. Yeah. So, um, was there anybody in your family who was in business, uh, Shadan, who kind of was in inspiring figure or some kind of a mentorship you know in the beginning you saw them specifically or was it a general observation you had about entrepreneurs which which got you interested in this or you know thinking about it for longer term that's an interesting point um actually my my father himself was an entrepreneur uh, but uh, ironically, that didn't inspire me and the reason is I think he did uh, quite well he 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 ran export business um, to the West, to Europe and um, some other regions when I was still uh, very young. So I don't recall much of it, but uh, what I did hear was uh, that he, um, he had a business partner or a client, I don't know the details, um, but uh, he was um, basically a, a, a robbed off, uh, you know, a lot of his money was taken. I think uh, one of the big shipments, um, he was basically cheated off and um, that led him to close the business. And uh, um, after that, he was uh, you know, never too uh, happy about it. And uh, so I saw the flip side also of, of uh, a bad partnership and uh, um, how it can impact. So really, that was not my inspiration. Um, although I said my, my dad was an entrepreneur, um, but um, what inspired me, as I said, was that um, looking at other businesses um, who um, who you know, who did very well and who had uh, um, 
a good way of life and uh, like to support their families and their livelihood. And uh, that's honestly what really inspired me. Yeah, I think interestingly you mentioned about having a partner kind of join you as a friend or somebody you can trust and then start a business. I think that's a very interesting point for a lot of people. Uh, it, it seems very daunting even if they have a good idea, you know, and let's say if they are already have a job and all of a sudden, man, I'm going to leave my job. I have this golden handcuff or a paycheck coming every, you know, two weeks and all of a sudden I would not have that and completely unknown. And I think that's what sometimes joining hands with somebody, particularly somebody you trust. Although in your case, which is so interesting that although your friend, your father did not have a success with a partner, you still chose to have a partner. And I think in this case, it was uh, you and me for audience to know that, you know, we joined hands together and started a, a, a business together and uh, went through lots of ups and downs. And the good news is we are still very good friends and we still trust each other. So with that, we'll take a short break and we'll be back again. Thank you, Shadan. We'll just see you soon. it like when you started this network out when you started sound vision those many years ago you know after 9 11 uh, one lady called me and she says where what is your channel which i can watch and i say i'm sorry we don't have a channel mm. and you know what she said she said then how america will know about you subhanallah Anything you want to say to the people who are watching? We had one sister who messaged that she's, she grew up on Sound Vision. What do you say to the people who have been long supporters? Thank you. Thank you. It is because of you we are able to do all of that. So the generation of Adam's world, you need to take it over for the next generation. And that's my invitation to you. So keep telling everybody where to watch. They can watch it on Galaxy 19 satellite, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, or easy thing, muslimnetwork.tv, or our YouTube channel, or our Facebook channel. And with your help, inshallah, ladies, the one who called me, what channel should I watch Muslims on? Mm -hmm. Answer is here and now. Right. Assalamu alaikum everyone, it's your brother Zain Bika from South Africa. One of the first educational programs ever produced for Muslim children was the ever popular Adam's World series. The colorful and comical Muslim puppets stole the heart of a generation. Sound Vision will be releasing brand new episodes of Adam's World with the launch of a Adam's World app. Subscribers will enjoy new Adam's World episodes as they are released as well as all the classic episodes of Adam's World. So visit adamsworldapp.com now to learn more, subscribe and enjoy new adventures of Adam and his friends. And let's keep helping tomorrow's Muslims today. Assalamu alaikum. It's Adam's World. Believe me, there's a lot to see. Bismillah. Let's explore.
Okay, we're back with uh, Shadan Malik on our program, Entrepreneurs Are Us. Shadan, welcome back. All right. So yeah, after the initial background, let's talk a little bit more about uh, your businesses and obviously the current business. Uh, give us a little bit about uh, all of that stuff uh, and, and some juicy details, if you if you don't mind. Whatever you can share. The juicy details is a hard one because, uh, um, yeah, we, we will see what comes out of it, but uh, I'll be happy to share uh, some early failures. Um, first, uh, we started, uh, uh, we had the idea of uh, apparel business. Somebody gave uh, uh, me that uh, India is a great place to import uh, t-shirts from. So I looked into uh, that a lot and we started uh, a business uh, with the name of Varsity Apparel and tried to get some samples. Um, but for one reason or another, that didn't, uh, that didn't fly. And then after that, uh, somebody gave an idea that how about bringing, you know, crafts, uh, craft goods made in India, because that's, uh, that has a lot of appreciation in the, in the West, in the U S. So we then tried to bring, uh, um, some uh, um, you know, craft uh, craft items like uh, uh, horses and camels made out of leather, um, and we tried to market that. And again, that didn't work. But it's uh, the reason I'm sharing all this is uh, that again, is uh, it takes a few attempts to to figure it out and uh, to make things work. So as they say, failures are the pillars to success. Um, and uh, then uh, um, I was uh, at, actually at a conference, a trade show, and I heard uh, this is, I'm talking about 95, uh, 95 or so, 96. That's where I overheard people talking about this thing called AOL and the internet. And I just piqued my interest. Uh, you know, it sounds pretty fascinating whether we're talking about how they could share pictures and um, you know, exchange uh, emails and have web, web pages. So I went home and I um, taught myself. Again, there was no internet at that, that time. And obviously I didn't have a computer in the first place um, at home. I had a work computer, but um, I didn't have anything to uh, research. And I remember we didn't have cell phones either at that time. So anyway, I went to the library and uh, tried to de do the the, the research on this and uh, eventually ended up buying uh, uh, myself uh, an assembled uh, uh, desktop computer and, and, and then research about AOL. Uh, actually, at that time, there was another company called Prodigy, I believe. So uh, again, the, the guy who assembled the computer um, told me about how to connect a modem, what is a modem and how to get internet. So that's how the, the very first steps of um, the idea started, that first we have to learn what this is. And once I learned, and uh, along the way, I brought uh, uh, my friend, you, Kaid, in the learning process, and so that we could both learn together. So you now I learned self-taught, um, this whole HTML business at the time, it was very, very basic. And um, after that, um, we started uh, to play with it and tried to make our first uh, hello world page, which uh, turned out okay. And um, and then, you no, know, it's almost like uh, you, you saw what others have done and you try to just do the same thing. You copied it, put the you know, put images and, and tags and try to see what it looks like on a web, web page. And, and once that uh, we figured it out, we thought, wow, this is fascinating. This is the, this is certainly the future. We could see that at the time. And we thought about, uh, again, now how, who do we approach uh, to teach them about it and show them the potential? So we started to look, uh, look around and, and talk to small businesses. And now, again, at that time, um, I was still working. Uh, you know, my friend, Kai, you were still working. So we could only do this part time in the evening or the weekend. So we, you know, we were, you know uh, some of the businesses we knew like restaurants and dessert shops. So we showed them and said, hey, look, um, and some doctor offices, we need some doctors. 
and we, we showed them and said, this is what you could do. This could be like the future, uh, almost like a digital yellow page is a digital directory for you. You should have a page. Um, but I think we were still a bit ahead of our times, uh, ahead of times at that time. Um, so the small businesses didn't quite buy uh, into our sales pitch, but that didn't let, uh, stop us. You know, we continued to improve our skills. We continued to learn how to how to make web pages, and then next we learned how to do applications, more sophisticated websites, if you will, with you know people entering some data through a form, and um, you know some dynamic things happening. So we continue to uh, teach uh, ourselves or learn. And along the way, I think some opportunities presented that uh, we jumped on. And that's, that was the beginning of uh, our website business called WIT, WIT, which stands for web, obviously, for the web and information technologies. And the reason information was because that was what um, both me and uh, you, Kai, we were uh, uh, pursuing the field of information science in a way data analysis and all that so that's that's kind of the detailed background you know the way you describe it almost looks like the history of the internet uh, Shadan. for the young people who are watching they would have no clue that like what <laughs> there was a modem what is a modem uh it's like telling kids about the land phones you know and those round uh, thing which you do and and call the numbers and stuff uh, it's just, just your your talk for five minutes can be in a museum somewhere which is like how the the people in the past used to, 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 you know, to do things. But yeah, no, I, I remember those days where you have to build your own computer and then you have to dial. And I still remember the days when you go to a, a restaurant and tell them about the website. And then you say, can I use your phone line? And I will show you how the web page would look like. And the person would say like, like, it's like, why would I have that? Like, what is it for? So yeah, all those days. And sometimes, you know, I think it also tells you that, you know, sometimes you're way ahead in some cases and that's also not good and how you kind of adjust yourself, how the market comes into place and stuff like that. But the, the key, I think, is what you said is about learning, continuous learning about new things. And I think that mindset of an entrepreneur, which is always thinking about with this new technology, what do I do? How do I sell this stuff? How can I use it? to improve myself and then it will improve others as well and how there is some financial transactions in it. And I think that's the mindset you need to have because a lot of people like you, they came to know about the internet and they had an AOL account and stuff like that, but they just use it for their personal purpose, did not, did not go beyond that. Um, now, from all that stuff, from website and stuff like that, as you mentioned in the beginning, now you're running a company which is uh, which is uh, called iDashboards, a dashboard company. Can you can you tell us a little bit about briefly about that journey and, and, and where you are right now? Number of people, location, customers, and uh, and and things like that, and what that company does. Well, iDashboards um, it was inspired uh, by the idea of uh, I standing for intuitive interactive dashboards and um, as I uh, talked earlier dashboards uh, really this is our more uh, in computer information dashboards with the idea that uh, when you have lots of data it's hard to gain insight when you're looking at hundreds of rows and you know, tens of columns of data but when the same data is presented through a good a graphical interface um, which are much more interactive there's a lot more you know, insight and quick insight to be had from the data. So that's uh, what dashboards are uh, you know, driven by. That's the idea of the dashboards. And iDashboards is one of the pioneer in, um, uh, in building and promoting this idea to the world. And of course, now, um, you know, fast forward to 2020, I think dashboard probably is a part of the, uh, the vernacular, the language that everybody understands uh, what it really means in the, com in the context of computer. But 15 years back when, I was telling people what we do in dashboards, especially being in uh, Detroit, the first thing they would think about is automotive dashboard. And we'll have to say, no, 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 give me a minute. I'll try to explain what, what it's all about. Um, so iDashboards, again, was, has been one of the pioneers for the last 15 plus years in the field. And um, we are still, uh, still, I think the, the, there's a big part of the world that needs to adapt to this idea 
Um, a lot, a lot has already been adopted, but still, uh, there, there's uh, many, many opportunities still out there where people are dealing with, uh, I mean, no, too much of data. They're overwhelmed, and they could use a, a software uh, like this uh, to better visualize it. And uh, we are fortunate to have clients in over 30 countries now, um, and um, uh, we have uh, well over a thousand clients. And uh, we, we are doing okay. We are uh, right now in the midst of a pandemic, but uh, thankfully um, we are still staying strong and um, able to show the value of it. In, in, fa in fact, uh, it uh, creates uh, a, a more of a need now because uh, a lot, most companies, uh, uh, they are obviously they have work from home policies, but everybody needs to be communicated uh, what's going on with the business or with their job um, through data. And what better way to communicate uh, than through live dashboards, they can see and monitor the state of uh, whatever they're working on. One of the myths out there, Shadan, is that you need to have an initial funding to start a business. Um, can, you, can you, from your experience, what, what, what do you say to that? Uh, well, it depends on the, the kind of business. Um, Excuse me, because uh, in, in um, some, some business, like what I can talk about is a technology business. In technology business, um, if uh, the, one of the key parts of the technology business is what we call IP, the, the intellectual property, the idea and, and ability to say, build that piece of technology, whether through writing a code or writing a little app for the phone um, and those things really don't take much of fun, right? It, it's, uh, it's an IP business. It takes uh, an idea and the knowledge to create something um, around that idea. So um, that doesn't, but where I think it does take funding is promoting uh, that product. Um, it's uh, uh, marketing. Marketing is where it takes a lot of money to you know, inform the world uh, about your idea, about your product. And I'm talking about when you want to scale it up, you know, you want to uh, take it big. That's where the big funding is needed. Um, obviously, there's always a catch-22 because um, uh, also to add, uh, uh, you know, add more staff and increase the organization, um, you, you need somehow to, to pay for that, uh, you know, increasing costs. And how do you pay for it, right? If, if you're business is growing, you can pay it organically. Uh, it's called bootstrap, right? So you kind of, you grow a small increments, you, you know, build the business, then hire somebody else to grow the business. Then again, you build the business, then you hire somebody else. Um, and that's, uh, I would say a little painful way and a slow way to build a business. And that's where the funding comes, uh, where uh, somebody can get you from literally from zero or 10 miles an hour to 60, 70 miles an hour. That, that goes about technology business. But if it's a non-technology business, um, then uh, again, it's case by case. I mean, I think um, certainly one can start a business with a small savings like we did. Um, I think that's true. Uh, talking about uh, the business, um, you right now, I think, have around 50 employees, I think, right? Um, approximately. Um, mm -hmm. How, you know... Uh, as, as you said about bootstrapping the business, obviously for the bootstrapping business, the entrepreneur is not just, you know, writing the code or coming up with the ideas, but is also an HR, is a CFO. I always joke even a CBO, which is a chief vacuuming officer. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about your learning experience in that where, you know, you had to do it all? Yes, um, that is that's quite true. Uh, I have been a chief vacuum officer also, um, but um, that's one thing that I think is, uh, um, I would say, um, very gratifying in some ways that uh, you get to learn a lot. Uh, you don't get uh, kind of pigeonholed or put into a little box in a cube and say, that's what you do. Um, nothing wrong with that. I mean, we, we need that also. We need people who are experts in one little thing um, and who are very good at it. Um, but uh, that's a luxury you 
can't afford in entrepreneurship. You have to quickly learn, you know, five, six different areas um, to, to handle the business. For example, when I to learn marketing to figure out how to market your product, right? you have to learn some basic sales techniques uh, to figure out how to sell value around your product. Uh, because again, initially it's hard to have, get uh, and hire somebody for marketing and somebody for sales. And of course, somebody for product development, somebody for supporting clients. So you're doing all that. And then the next thing, you know, um, you know, you have to figure out balancing books. You have to you know, be an accountant of some, uh, some sort uh, to understand uh, what, uh, you know, what is a, a P&L statement. And uh, because again, at the end of the year, you go to a talk to your accountant CPA, they will ask you questions that you need to understand uh, the concepts of basic accounting. So again, you're talking about knowing uh, something about marketing, something about sales, uh, something about, you have to learn maybe different software, dep depending if you're an e-commerce shop, you have to learn how to set, uh, you know, set an e-commerce uh, website and sell something. So you have to learn a little bit about the uh, technology in that sense. So yes, it's, it's a very diverse uh, uh, learning experience as an entrepreneur. And um, that's, that's what you get with it. Yeah, no, I think one of the things as you mentioned is for the entrepreneur is that basically a continuous learning. That is a key, I think one of the characteristics of an entrepreneur. So with that said, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back with Shadan Malik. We are justice for all. Headquartered in the heart of downtown Chicago, Justice for All is a global humanitarian initiative dedicated to raising awareness for human rights concerns impacting vulnerable minority groups. We promote policies that protect religious freedom, address the root causes of mass displacement, and recognize the plight of refugees and forced migrants. Our diverse team of staff and volunteers, led by Imam Malik Mujahid, work tirelessly to help Justice for All achieve their goals. Past campaigns covered a wide range of humanitarian concerns. Through Bosnia Task Force, Imams and leaders of Chicago's Muslim community worked to ensure Bosnia became a top national issue. This led to life-saving American policies in Bosnia. A key accomplishment was helping to get rape declared a war crime. Initiatives also included Kosovo Task Force, Central African Republic Task Force, and Flint Coalition, which brought awareness to the water crisis affecting the people of Flint, Michigan. Highlights of our work include Supporting Black Lives Matter. Parliament of the World's Religions. Addressing climate change. So wasteful consumption starts the ruthless production and that's where we need all the fossil fuel in the world. and prominent media exposure. This is Imam Malik Mujahid, uh, president of Justice for All. And I'm the director of outreach for Justice for All. And that's why we need to go back to what worked. Today Full we're thing. demanding an apology uh, from the CEO of Costco. The Chinese crackdown on Uyghurs and other Turkic people has only gotten worse. Current programs such as Burma Task Force advocate for the rights of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh, internally displaced populations, and all those denied freedom of movement and at risk of starvation. Through this, we mobilized thousands of calls to elected representatives. This paved the way for the U.S. to increase funding for Rohingya refugees from $30 million to over $600 million. Two of our documentaries were featured on international news outlets. The Rohingya People, a slow-burning genocide on BBC World News, and Rohingya Refugees Tell of Massacre was featured on CNN. We've organized rallies, UN mission visits, expanded presentations on campuses, promoted research and report writing, 
outreach to think tanks, media, and other influencers. Faith Coalition educates about the Rohingya genocide and crimes against humanity faced by ethnic groups in Burma. We've traveled to refugee camps, convened a meeting of Karen, Kachin, and Rohingya leaders, both to encourage cooperation and to guide them in congressional outreach. We organized Rohingya Advocacy Day. This led to over 100 participants visiting the offices of 60 U.S. Senators and congressional representatives. Free Kashmir advocates for the people of Kashmir. Long-term goals include the call for self-determination, the end of the Indian military's occupation of the territory, and raising awareness of Kashmiri issues among the American people. After the August 5th reinvasion of Kashmir, we organized national protests in front of various Indian government buildings, partnered with Stand With Kashmir, and launched a petition condemning the Gates Foundation's decision to present Prime Minister Modi a humanitarian award. Save Uyghur informs Muslims and neighbors of other faiths about the ongoing cultural genocide of Uyghur Muslims and mobilizes public support. Our projects include boycotting Chinese products with our Fast From China campaign, pushing Bill S-178 in the Senate, and organizing a nationwide protest of Costco. Together, we can continue to stand up for justice. Justice for all. All right, we're back with Shadan Malik again. Um, Shadan, welcome back. So, um, with uh, this in this segment, um, I think one of the things I forgot to mention in your intro, Shadan was the author of the first uh, book written on dashboarding, which is the you know the software which he eventually built and the company now he runs. Um, Shadan, welcome back. Thank you, guys. By the way, I would not recommend anybody reading that book. That'll put you to sleep in five minutes. Well, it will put you to sleep, and I think the the, the dashboarding has changed for so long. So this thing is continuously evolving as mm -hmm. iDashboard is evolving. Mm -hmm. You know, before we start on another segment, which is about, you know, what your advice to young people and all that, maybe if I can ask you, and maybe there is an advice in this, anything you would, you would uh, now looking back, you would think, man, I wish I had done this thing different. Um, Maybe you would not have done it this way. Maybe you would have thought bigger, and maybe I had a little bit more support from somewhere. Can you can you can you can you tell us a little bit more about that? Mm, I would say everything needs to be. Uh, you need to sell any idea, any product, any service, and um, I think is one thing. If I would uh, recommend is to find. Uh, if uh, the entrepreneur uh, himself or herself, if sales is not your forte, um, find somebody who's good in sales because uh, nothing happens until somebody sells something. There's a phrase, something like that. So um, I think uh, being successful uh, early in finding a, a good sales person, I think is, is key to any business. Um, and, um, and, I, I, and I also, I think you have to, you have to I've realized to learn the respect uh, or, or respect um, the skills, the art of selling. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing, you know. Uh, selling is really, it's locked into it. Um, it's really being able to convey the value to somebody. Why will they, you know, spend uh, money on something? So um, I think that that's one key thing. I, I wish uh, I had uh, um, some good, uh, uh, a good salesperson or good sales team early um, in, in the thing. Um, the cost money, obviously, you know, know. so um, mm -hmm. that's where sometimes funding comes into play to hire really a good sales team and stuff like that. And although I think, don't you think that over the time since you started the business, the selling has changed quite a bit as well now? 
and how sales and marketing has become one. You know, the old way of selling where you go play a, a game of golf with uh, you know somebody and then sell them something. I think those days are kind of numbered as far as technology selling is concerned. Yeah, certainly, and that's that's the thing that being able to find the somebody to complement uh, complement an individual who so can do that combination of sales and marketing. You know, that's that's very important. The other thing I would say um, would be good is to have a right mentor, somebody who has done it before. Um, yeah, you can learn 20, 25 years of experience um, very quickly. Uh, by having mentors who might have uh, experience in that particular field, that would help. Yeah, no, I think that's a great advice. And I think, to be honest, one of the reasons for this program is to expose our audience to, you know, what kind of things entrepreneurs went through. And hopefully they look for like a, 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 a mentor which will give them, you know, a feedback. And there are a lot of people, I'm sure, including you, who have mentored other, uh, you know, young people, uh, whether in their studies or if they're looking for an advice on to doing something. I think we need to have more and more people we can go and get mentorship in entrepreneurship, you know, in particular. Um, you know, uh, young people normally here, um, now they have access to everything which, as you mentioned, you had to go somewhere to build a computer and get, get access to. And sometimes things, I think, just look just so easy in some ways. And I think that's why a lot of their time is, um, I would call it, unfortunately, wasted in social media. Um, you know, I hope uh, more and more of our youth basically watch shows like these and read things. What would, you, what would your recommendation be, particularly for young people, what they should read, watch, and get some inspiration um, about getting into entrepreneurship? Mm, well, there, there's a lot of materials on entrepreneurship, uh, a lot of inspiring stuff and publications um, you know, from magazines like Inc. and Entrepreneur. Um, but um, going back to uh, that little uh, pain point you brought up about the wastage of time that uh, um, social media is, uh, is causing, um, that's certainly an, an something to be alarmed because uh, um, to do something, to accomplish something in life, um, an entrepreneurship, uh, not just entrepreneurship, but anything uh, for that matter, it takes a uh, lot, lot of time, a lot of hard work and a lot of time. And um, we have limited time in our lives. So when uh, for you know, hours that we are on, no, whether it's young or old, doesn't matter, but for the hours that uh, one is spending on social media, chatting and gossiping and um, exchanging ideas and politics and whatnot, uh, is those hours uh, uh, that uh, they don't have to put in uh, and work hard towards uh, pursuing an idea you know, or an entrepreneurship. So, um, it's, again, I said we have just limited time in our lives, and I think we have to be wise with our time. So that's certainly, uh, I'd say to my um, teenage daughter, kids also, that uh, um, that you know, spending all that social media time is really not going to help. Uh, it's okay a little bit to stay connected with the friends, but um, there has to be a line drawn. Now, now again, you, you asked about uh, what materials. Uh, that will help in, um, you know, in pursuing an idea. Uh, it also had to do with the, you know, an individual's passion, what they're passionate about, what they know about um, certain, um, certain um, so, you know, aspect of the business they want to do, right? For example, if somebody wants to pursue uh, a home decor business, then they need to uh, learn uh, learn about that, you know, maybe they might have to take uh, some courses and read some books around home decor. And I'm sure they have some natural passion around it, you know, interior design, things like that. And I'm just, this is just a very random example I took. Um, so it, 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 that, that's a good thing about the internet, that it has the materials and anything and everything you want. So. Every Everything is at your fingertip. You just have yeah. to have uh, your, you should have a time management skills. And I think that's a, one of the thing about entrepreneurs that, you know, they manage their time wisely because they have so many things to do 
And as you said, if you're pursuing an idea, you know, you want to go deep and you want to learn everything about it. And that takes time. That takes uh, your passion to learn new things and then eventually execute on them. So before, as we are about to close out, uh, I would uh, ask, um, you know, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how faith plays a role in your, in your business, in your life? Sure. Faith is, uh, you know, the thing that ties personally me, that ties me to the ground, right? It's almost like uh, is, the, is the post, the pillar that keeps me grounded. Um, and that includes, uh, you know, my, you know, my journey uh, with, you know, with the, this whole uh, starting business because I wanted to, um, first of all, uh, one of my inspiration, I didn't say earlier, but one of my inspiration to have a business was so that I, I was, I wanted to be able to afford a house um, and afford a car, you know, basic necessities without going to the bank, without um, depending on a mortgage where I have to take loans and interest. And I figured if I just keep myself in a regular job, you know, I would, it would be a long, long road before I'd be able to write a check and, and buy off a, a nice uh, home that I, I thought was nice, right? It's, it's a very individualistic thing. But so even so, to example, to buy a $500,000 house these days, um, which is modest at best, um, you need $500,000 cash. And most jobs, it's hard to earn that kind of money after you pay your taxes and then pay your expenses. Uh, how much can you save? So you can do the math. So that was one of uh, aspect of my faith that it did not, uh, doesn't uh, endorse uh, interest-based system that I, I wanted to reject from the get-go. And thankfully, even in our businesses, we have never taken any interest-based loan. So um, that was one thing. Um, and uh, there are a few others. You know, I, I do remember talking to you, Shadan, a long time back that I think one of your wish was that you can pray at your in your own office uh, whenever you know there's a time for prayer, and so mashallah, being an entrepreneur, having your own office, and having the luxury to basically stop a meeting and say, you know what, I need to pray, and we'll we'll meet again. I think those are the things. For some people, it might be pretty small, but I think um, for people of faith, I think they are big things. And so there's more to entrepreneurship than just making more money and having a great life. That is really not the idea behind entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is to lead the life the way you want to, to lead and be in charge of that. And I think that's an important thing to remember. So with that, we'll end the show. Thank you, Shadan, for uh, being our first guest. And hopefully we'll uh, continue to do this program. We are calling it Entrepreneurs Are Us. Thank you, Shadan. Talk to you soon.